The split point technique solves inequalities by using the following steps. In order, using addition and subtraction, move everything to one side to get zero on the other side. Combine the terms using a common denominator, factor the numerator and denominator, then we're going to identify our split points. Now, our split points are points where the numerator or denominator equal zero. Then what we're going to do is create a sign chart using the split points and indicate which split points are zeros and which points are undefined. Then we're going to determine the sign of intervals of our sign chart. And we're going to write using set builder notation. Okay? And I'm going to get rid of this square root. So it's simply this expression here does not equal zero. So if we look at this first example here, well, steps one. Oh, if we look at this example here, we need to move this over. So we're going to use subtraction to move it over to get x plus 1 minus 1 greater than or equal to 1 minus 1. And this is step 1. Which gives us x is greater than or equal to 0. Now, the split point, so step two and three are done. Step four, we only have one numerator, and that's x or x over one. So step four, split point at x equals zero. And step five, we're going to create the sign chart, which when creating a sign chart, there are many ways to create a sign chart. I like creating a sign chart where my vertical line operates like the X axis. And I'm going to put my split points on top of each vertical line. And then I'm just going to write out my factors, whatever each individual factor is here. And sorry, my factor should be just X. Now, before and after these split points, we write out the sign, positive when we're above, minus when we're below. And step six is about multiplying all of these signs using sign multiplication to determine the signs in these resulting intervals. And here it's pretty simple, plus negative. And I like to add a little zero to indicate here, I'm a zero here. And step seven, so this is step six, step seven is we are going to Combine, use this sign chart to create our set using set builder notation. Okay, slash interval notation. So here, I want to know when I'm greater than or equal. So I'm going to take equal and positive. This is my interval. So x is going to be in the set 0 to infinity, which can also be written as x is an element of the real numbers such that x is greater than or equal to zero. Well, let's take a look at our second and third examples, which are a little bit more complicated. So in our second example, we simply want to know when x does not equal zero. And steps one through three, they are done, are complete. Step four, identifying our split points, well, that's minus one, one, or zero, one. Step five, we create our sign chart. X minus one, X, X plus one. And we get, we're zero at these points. Now here, X minus one is positive, negative, 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 positive, positive, negative, negative, and for x and x plus 1 is positive, 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 negative. Multiplying our signs, we get positive, negative, positive, negative. Here, we want to know when these intervals do not equal 0. So we've completed step 6. And step 7 is identifying when we're not equal to 0. So that would be like this. And I will often draw a sketch of the number line below 
to think about, okay, what is the set that satisfies the constraint? And here it is, X is in minus infinity to minus one, union with minus one to zero, union with zero to one, union with one to infinity. And we're not including minus one, zero, or one. And that is our interval notation. What about this expression? This expression is slightly harder. Again, steps one through three are complete. Step four, we have x equaling minus one, zero, and one as our split points. In step five, we create our sign chart. And our sign chart is pretty much the exact same it was before, minus one, zero, one. We're at zero at these three values. We have x minus one, x, and x plus one. We fill in our sign chart for each of these factors. Positive, negative, negative, negative. Positive, positive, negative, negative. Positive, 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 negative. Multiplying these, we get our signs positive, negative, positive, negative with zeros at the point. Now here, I like to, again, draw a number line below satisfying my constraint. And my constraint is greater than or equal to zero. That's the constraint I'm concerned with. So because of this, I'm going to take everything that is positive or zero. So I'm going to include this value, include this value, include this value, and go on. And now that I've drawn that little sketch, it's quite easy using these numbers minus one, zero, and one to create our interval. X is in zero or X is in minus one to zero union with zero or one to infinity. Now, here our example was asking, when are all the constraints satisfied? So we want to take the intersection of all three of these constraints. So to do this, I've got each individual constraint. I want to satisfy all the constraints. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a picture satisfying all the constraints. I'm going to start with drawing my first interval. So I'll draw the number line. And my first interval is greater than or equal to zero. So I'm going to take zero. I'm going to go strictly greater than zero. Then I'm going to draw my next number line. And I'm this here is everywhere except for minus one, zero, one. And my last interval is going to be one to infinity and minus one to zero. Now, this one doesn't have the nicest interval, but if I go up and I'm just gonna slightly change this, I'm gonna make this a zero and a zero. Well, if we do this, now our split point is gonna be, our split point is gonna, we're gonna have X minus one or X plus one is greater than or equal to zero. And our split point is gonna be at minus one. So if our split point is at minus one, our integral vol goes from minus one, our sign, chain's gonna, sign chart's gonna stay the same, and we're gonna get minus one to infinity, or X is strictly greater than minus one. Now, this is gonna be a slightly more interesting interval. And I'll show you why. Now, when we draw our interval, we're going to be going from minus one to positive infinity. So if we look at our overlaps, remember, we want to satisfy all conditions 
when I draw this final number line, it's going to be not minus 1, because I'm open here, up until not 0, but everything in between, and then not 1 up until infinity. And we get that x is in minus 1 to 0 union 1 to infinity, or we could represent this using set notation as x is a real number such that minus 1 is less than x, which is less than 0, or x is greater than 1. Well, now we have an even more challenging problem. We have an inequality, but this side doesn't have zero. So now we're going to have to do step one, two, and three, as well as the rest of our process. So let's remind ourselves what step one is. What we're going to do is we're going to use addition and subtraction to get everything over to one side. So this is telling us that x, two minus x over two plus x minus two is greater than or equal to two minus two which tells us that 2 minus x over 2 plus x minus 2 is greater than or equal to 0. Now, step 2 is going to be combined using a common denominator. So 2 minus x over x 2 plus x minus 2 2 plus x over 2 plus x is greater than or equal to 0 which implies that two minus x minus four minus x all over my or minus two x. Let's clear this up a little bit. Minus four minus 2x over 2 plus x is greater than or equal to 2. Simplifying this down gives us that minus 2 minus 3x over 2 plus x is greater than or equal to 0. This should be a 0 as well. Well, now our step 3 is to factor the top and the bottom. Or write it out nicely. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out this minus 3. So minus 3 bracket x plus 2 over 3 all over x plus 2 is greater than or equal to 0. And this makes step 4 quite easy. The split points are, are going to be x equals minus 2 over 3 and x equals minus 2. In step 5, we're going to draw our sign chart. We have two split points, minus 2 over 3 and minus 2. Now, at min minus 2 is less than minus 2 over 3. So when writing these, we have to be careful. We don't just write them out. We write them out from smallest to largest. And now, when I do this, the minus 2, this is on the denominator, so it's undefined here. Whereas at the two thirds, it equals zero. Now I write my th three factors, minus three, x plus two thirds, and x plus two. And now I'm gonna write my signs. You'll notice I am negative, negative, negative for minus three, it's always negative. For x plus two thirds, I'm positive, then I'm gonna be negative, negative. And x plus two, I'm positive, positive. Now we multiply our signs. One negative is going to be negative. Two negatives is going to be positive. Three negatives is going to be negative. And what do we want? We want greater than or equal. So because it's greater than or equal, I'm going to include my zero greater than, and then I'm not including this point here. And this is my step six. And now I finally, in step seven, write this out using interval or set builder notation. So x is in minus 2 up to minus 2 thirds squared. And we have our solution. 